and welcome once again to the land of the Ever After Storybook. Where am I, you may ask? Well, I'm in the never-ending Enchanted Forest. Do you know what kind of animals you can find in the Enchanted Forest? Dragons, trolls, flying horses, firebirds, water dogs, and squirrels. There's nothing special about the squirrels, but it is a forest and they are everywhere. <coughs> Do you know what happens in Enchanted Forest? Battles, wars, and with every battle or war, there's always a hero. You know what I mean? Like a knight in shining armor. A person who comes to save the day. A mighty warrior and who is in the face of complete disaster is strong, calm, and composed. You know, like me. The thing is, that's not me. And they'll never be me. You wanna know why? Cause how can just, how can one person overcome such obstacles? How can one single human being conquer something that is so staggering? Now don't get me wrong, I know what happens. Cause I've seen it all the time. I've seen the Prince Charming fight off all the evildoers. I saw Mulan fight off a whole bunch of bad dudes in the battle. But me, come on, could you imagine that? Imagine me on the battlefield. While everyone is fighting for their loved ones in the kingdom of whatever land, I'm over here wondering what I'm gonna eat next. Or if I can get an extra pair of metal shoes because these ones are pinching my feet. See what I mean? Me being a knight in shining armor or me ever finding a happy ever after is impossible. There's no hope for me. Whoa, 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 hold on. What did you just say? Oh, hi, Grace. I was just telling the kids that I'm hopeless and there's no use in me trying to accomplish anything ever because all I'm ever going to end up like is a big pile of dragon slobber. Okay, well, two things. One, I don't think dragon slobber, that's gross. And two, you are not hopeless. Oh yeah, tell it to this face. <laughs> okay, Carl, can you at least tell me why you're feeling that way? Well, it's simple. I'm here in the land of the ever after, where everything is possible, but yet. Yet what? Yet I feel like sometimes things just aren't going to get better. Like not only will things not turn around and get better for me, but even if they're dead, I don't know if I'm strong enough to make the journey. Oh, Carl, you're not. Excuse me? Okay, that may have come out a bit harsh. What I mean is you, by yourself, are not strong enough to make it through the journey and become who you've been called to be. None of us are, but there is hope. How is there hope? Well, look at Ruth. Not literally, her story. You remember she had lost her husband and now went to live with her mother-in-law. You remember her name? Sure I do. Quick kids, what's Ruth's mother-in-law's name? Are you sure? Okay, okay. <clears throat> yes, her name is Naomi. Wink. <laughs> Good job, Carl. Yes, and it was at this time Ruth needed to find a job so she could start bringing home food for them both. What job did she get? Was she like a cashier at a supermarket? Or how about a chef? An astronaut? What? Well, she found a field that was filled with workers. And so she began to follow the workers who were collecting all the crops and picking up all the leftovers that they had left behind. Wait, so she was just getting leftovers from the stuff that people didn't want to keep? That's a bummer. Yeah, but what's cool is, even though Ruth wasn't probably the happiest or in the best situation, she did what she needed to do to survive and take care of herself and Naomi. You know what? That's pretty cool. <laughs> it really was. So anyway, while Ruth was out in the field, a man named Boaz noticed her. Boaz. <laughs> Boaz. That's a funny name. Boaz. Boaz asked a friend who she was. And once he found out her story, he went to talk to her. Oh no, she wasn't in trouble for taking over leftover crops, was she? <laughs> the opposite. Boaz went over and encouraged her. He gave her bread to eat till she was full, and then he did the coolest thing. No way! What? Boaz did a triple backflip into a Cincinnati tuba? Um, no. Oh, well I just assumed because he said he did the cool thing. Well, what he did was tell all of his friends and other workers to drop extra grain for Ruth to take home. Oh, that's so sweet. Wait a minute. What? Does Boaz have a crush on Ruth? Well, I don't want to spoil the story for you, but maybe. 
<laughs> no way. This really is a fairy tale, Grace. So what happens next? Does Ruth fall into a deep sleep and Boaz has to rescue her? Oh no, does Boaz get captured and Ruth needs to rescue him? Whoa, whoa, Carl, <laughs> you're getting ahead of yourself. There definitely is more to the story, but for now, let's focus on the fact that Boaz helped Ruth and Naomi have hope again, because his actions toward Ruth were very gracious. Seems like it. <laughs> wow, that's super encouraging. Ruth and Naomi lost so much and it seemed like all hope was lost. But then this happens. Exactly. That's why I wanted you to hear this. You see, God takes care of us in every season, no matter how difficult it may be. But if we just continue to trust and push on, then who knows what gifts and plans God has in store for us. Because guess what, Carl? I haven't even told you the coolest part. What? What is it? Boaz is actually a part of Naomi's family. They're related. What? Are you kidding? <laughs> nope. So when Naomi found out Ruth had met Boaz, she was excited. Because Boaz was what they called a kinsman redeemer, which meant if Boaz married Ruth, he would be able to provide for her and Naomi by law. <laughs> no way. Wow. God really is full of surprises. <laughs> Holy guacamole, this story keeps getting bigger and better. But speaking of bigger, our big idea today is God gives us hope. So let's say it out loud like something from a fairy, like a, like a dragon. Let's act like a dragon, okay? We need big fiery breath. We need to get those wings out, okay? Ready? One, two, three. God gives us hope! Whoa, that was so good. You guys did an amazing job. Hopefully everyone acted like a dragon. And if you didn't, it's okay. I don't mind acting like a dragon by myself. Now, the second thing I'm going to ask you is that you don't miss next week's Grow TV episode, okay? Promise? All right. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. It's time for today's Bible story. It comes from the book of Ruth, chapter 2. Naomi and Ruth traveled back to Naomi's hometown called Bethlehem. Once they arrived... In order to have food and money, there was really only one thing for them to do, to go out to the fields to pick up the leftover food that had been left behind by the workers. Ruth chose to do this because she was younger. As you can imagine, this wasn't the best job. As you can also imagine, the other people who worked in the field didn't leave a lot behind. So, things for Naomi and Ruth seemed pretty hopeless it was hard to imagine anything good happening for them. But then, it just so happened that the field where Ruth was working was owned by a man named Boaz. And Boaz just so happened to be related to Naomi. Can you believe that? Boaz saw Ruth and was kind to her. He told her to gather as much as she wanted from his field and also told her that she should come back to his field to gather every day because he would make sure she was safe and taken care of. Ruth went back to Naomi with plenty of food for both of them. Ruth shared what had happened with Boaz. Naomi thanked God because this was really good news. It meant that God was still taking care of them. Naomi and Ruth had no idea how they would make it on their own. But when things seem hopeless, God gives us hope. Psalm 121, verse 8. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore.